We all want to be happy. We want to follow our bliss. But these days, that's easier said than done. Hell, I spent the last two hours trying to write this intro, but was sidetracked at least 15 times with text messages and DMs. We live in a distraction-filled world. But what happens when you let your true passion, your real genuine interest in mushrooms, take over and guide your life? How far can you take it? How much can you learn? And how quickly? And can it make you happy? Tonight, we're going to meet one such person who did exactly that. And she's going to tell us how she did it and what happened. Her story is as inspirational as it is educational. And for me, she is a role model. And she sets the bar very high for giving back to the amateur mycological community here in the United States. Tonight, we're going to meet the new president of the Alabama Mushroom Society, the one and only Alicia Milliken. You're listening to the Myco Geeky Podcast, a podcast that inspires people to grow mushrooms at home to improve their mental, emotional, and physical health. Most people call him geeky, and he is a passionate mushroom cultivator advocate and educator every week he sits down with fellow cultivators mushroom educators scientists and therapists to discuss the various ways people can approach mushroom cultivation and how mushrooms can be used to improve their lives all right what's up everybody welcome to the Michael geeky podcast the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mushroom cultivation game I'm your host, Michael Geeky, and we have a wonderful show for you tonight. Uh, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Alicia Milliken. She is the president of the Alabama Mushroom Society. She's also a trustee for North American Mycological Association, otherwise known as NAMA. She's a volunteer coordinator for Fundus out in California and a newly assistant curator of fungi for the University of West Alabama Herbarium. So five years ago, you want to know what she did? With mushrooms, nothing, not a darn thing. So we're going to get to know uh, Alicia a little bit better, find out what drives her, find out how she went from no knowledge whatsoever of mushrooms to, you know, really being somebody in the amateur mycology scene. Um, before we do that, though, of course, we're going we're gonna to shout out the Discord mods. We're going to shout out the Patreon supporters. I love everybody who is supporting what I'm all about. Um, Every week, I hear from lots of you guys telling me, thank you, thank you, thank you. This podcast has made a difference. That's why I'm doing it. So as long as it keeps making a difference, we're going to keep doing it, guys. Uh, keep bringing on cool, interesting people uh, in all facets of cultivation and mycology. Um, you know, it's uh, spring. Spring is here. I'm out foraging. I, I'm, I'm cultivating, but cultivating less and foraging more. And we're going to have more people on to talk about field mycology, more people on talking about mushrooms in general, uh, more people on talking about therapeutic integration, all that good stuff. Um, speaking of therapeutic uh, things, um, I just got the new, let me see here if I can show it off. The new, come on, dude. Why is it not doing it? There we go. The new Stealthy Spores. 2024 spring deck it's in i got a couple decks we're gonna play it this weekend find out uh you know who who's the big boss and who's gonna beat who um we got some i wanted to point out a couple of these for you guys um some of the villains are interesting right there we got uh cobweb mold yeah, I don't have to deal with that too often. Thank God. What else do we got? Overwatering. Here we go. Overwatering. Guys, don't use a garden hose to, to water your tubs, please. Don't do that. Clean them, sure. Um, everybody's friend right here. Trichoderma. And, you know, uh, one of my favorites. Because um, you got to love these guys. These guys are what keep you going every day, right? Um, the haters yeah hang out on facebook you'll you'll meet a few of them they're there uh trust me and we got some cool new strains in here we got albino gumby we got uh there was one uh blue ghost 
Um, everybody loves Blue Ghost. That is a great one. Um, what else we got on here? Gandalf, Great White Monster, Aeoli, Quatla, Lucista Cambodian, Lucid Gates, Mazatepec. I'm, I'm working on some Mazatepec right now. We'll see how that goes. Moby Dick, Mutant Gates. Shout out to the homie, uh, Drip Genics. Um, you know, he, he he was hanging out in Genetic House working some of those uh, uh, Gates line and he got himself uh, a mutation. So that's making its way around these days. Um, what else we got? One of my favorites, ODPE. Oh, yeah, got to show these off. Right here, guys. Ovoids. Definitely prime time right now. If you're anywhere near the Ohio River Valley, get out there and look for some ovoids. Toke, all sorts of good stuff. So anyway, spring uh, 2024 deck is out. Check it out. If you haven't uh, got a deck, now you got two choices. You can get the winter deck. You can get the spring deck. Um, good times, good times. Shout out Stealthy Spores, StealthySpores.com. Promo code geeky gets you 10% off. All that money goes to Mycelium Revolution, the, the Michael Mamas. They were just on here. Going to have a camp out here soon. Going to be a good time. All right. So um, we're, we're, we're still doing uh, discounts on Myco Treks. If anybody's still thinking about going, uh, we've extended that. Just kind of felt like we're going to give a discount. We can't give it to some people, not others. So we're going we're gonna to ride on this discount here. Um, so, uh, enjoy that. There's still some spots available. Uh, what else we got going on? Yeah, I think we're caught up guys. All right. So let me, uh, I, I gotta just tell you guys, this person absolutely sets the bar. She follows her interests. She really has real interests. I, I'm going to just say this once. If you keep saying you love mushrooms, but you're not reading about them, you're not learning about them, you're not growing them, you're just not doing any of those things, it's okay. Maybe you don't actually like mushrooms. I know they're popular these days. Um, if you don't actually want to do any of those things, then you might not like mushrooms. No worries. It's all good. You can still watch the show. I won't even be mad at you. But man, if you do genuinely like mushrooms, Make some time for them. They will take care of you. They they will help you. They will heal you. They will, uh, you know, fill, fill something uh, that just feels really good inside your heart, inside your soul, inside your spirit. Um, getting out in nature never hurts anybody. So anyway, without further ado, let's welcome her to the show. All right. Welcome to the show, Alicia Milliken. What's up? Hey, how are you? Man, I'm just sitting in my basement. I just put my kids to bed. Um, I got a little bit of solitude, and I am very fortunate. I get to hang out with you tonight and talk about mushrooms, my favorite topic. So it's going good so far. How about you? That's a good evening, yeah. Uh, also, my kids are in bed, a little bit of peace and quiet, dive into some mushrooms. All right, so let me just tell you this. I When I went to NAMA, I didn't know who you were. I hadn't heard anything about you, but let me tell you what I observed. One of the hardest working people at NAMA right here talking to me right now. You were hustling around, scurrying around. You were doing three things at once. And I was like, this woman literally channeled like the superior mom energy into this, this big foray. So I, hats off to you. Um, I, I'm sure everybody in that organization fully understands how much hard work you put into it. But I'm just, as a total outsider, I, it was readily apparent to me. So kudos to you. It was a great foray. Thanks. It was a, a bit of a whirlwind. I was, I was, I was running like nonstop, but it was a blast. And then I was at the Ohio Mushroom Festival, brand new mushroom festival, which boy, it sure shaped up to be a, a pretty solid mushroom festival, man. And, and you were killing it there too. So I was like, all right, over here, we, we got some real players. It, it 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 was it was a good summer. It was great to see um you know what it looks like. This is what I really love, and this is what I like to talk about on the show is there are people 
that really love mushrooms, but they don't know where to put that energy. I think you are you you and a couple other people I've had on are just shining examples of how no matter where you live, you can make it work. You can create things, you can create opportunities and situations if they don't exist in your area. This is all the stuff that we're going to get into tonight. All right. So how about we do this? This is kind of a, a tradition. I like to ask everybody their first mushroom memory. Go as far back as you can. Like, what is the earliest, earliest memory that, that you have of mushrooms? And then tell me sort of your like Myco origin story, how, how you went from seeing a mushroom one day to having it be a big part of your life. Okay. So, um, I come from a line of recent European immigrants. My great grandmother came over from Hungary um, when she was 16, um, and we are Danube Schwabian, which means that they we are of German culture. But my family was from Yugoslavia in the Danube Valley, um, and they grew up eating mushrooms. And you know that European culture of going out and, and picking mushrooms and eating mushrooms, and um, a lot of that died in the immigration, but there were a few species that they kind of passed down. And I remember my dad going out in the yard and uh, picking what I now know was a species of agaricus um, and uh, using some very non-official folklore sort of tricks to prove that they were edible, such as peeling the skin and seeing how far back it peels and um, what they smelled like, which I guess has some credit uh we we would cook up agaricus from the yard and that that's my very first memory of mushrooms i believe wow you're lucky so so instead of eating those horrible cans of button mushrooms you okay i really like those cans of button mushrooms i ever since i was really little i would uh request my mom to saute them up in a pan and i would eat them on toast for breakfast they're not great but i do like them but i eat everything so yeah, man, my eight-year-old's bougie now. She's a little mushroom bougie. Uh, she, I think she's up to nine or ten uh, foraged sp edible species that she's consumed. And so now every time there's like a regular mushroom, she'll go, oh, this isn't a foraged mushroom, is it? And I'm like, yeah, it's not. You're right. My kids will pick, my kids are two and four, and they will pick puffballs from the yard and come in and be like, mama, will you cook it? Will you cook it? And I'm like, these aren't even the like, good ones, but okay. Like, yeah, the puffballs are tricky. I've tried a couple recipes, not a fan. My buddy Don King, he says he swears he can, he can cook them in a way that you have to slice them thin because they have like this gooey sort of tofu texture. If you don't, you have to slice them thin and you have to saute them until they are a beautiful, crispy, golden brown. Like they have to be golden and then there's still, you know, lots of salt and they're still like, you know, okay, but. I'm going to keep trying. Yeah. They pop up in, in my neighborhood quite a bit. So I usually get several massive ones to play with every year. So, well, well I'm going to keep trying to perfect that one. We'll see. All right. So I, I love that. Um, Cause I've heard stories, right. Of Eastern Europeans, you know, that's part of their culture. Um, it's of course sad that that gets a bit lost when you go to a new place you got new mushrooms you don't you know you're a little cautious i'm glad some agaricus popped up in in your guys's yard all right so so you're young you you you're exposed to mushrooms you even eat the crappy mushrooms in a little tiny can get get us to really like a life of of mycology Okay. Uh, so growing up, I was very outdoorsy and like survival was my thing. Like I had my survival pack and I would go out canoeing and I had all my supplies and I was really big into like wild edible foods. So I would collect stinging nettle and cattails and things like that. And so mushrooms sort of fit into my world just as like knowing what you could eat as a survival food um, and really had very little interest or knowledge of mushrooms up until um, uh, fairly recently. Um, so I'm originally from Northeast Ohio and moved to the South and I moved and I didn't really know anybody. Um, I did get my master gardener, my state certification as a master gardener and my focus was wild edible plants because again, that was sort of my, my background. Um, and 
I moved and I didn't know anybody and I was sort of seeking a community and I saw an advertisement for an Alabama Mushroom Society meeting happening in Birmingham, Alabama. And I was like, that's interesting. Like I had a three month old and nothing to do. And I was like, I'm going to this Alabama Mushroom Society meeting. And um, I met Anthony Goodman, who was the uh, founder of the society and some other like mushroom nerds. And they did a little presentation on cultivation, I think is what it was. And we talked mushrooms and I'm just taking it all in because I didn't know really anything about mushrooms, but it, it, the, the seed was planted, the, the mycelium was spread and I was like, okay, this is cool. I went on a couple of forays and, um, what really sucked me in was when I found out how accessible the science is to citizen mycologists that somebody like me who is just um you know I don't have I don't have a degree I don't have a lab that I can make scientifically useful observations I can collect scientifically useful data um just because of the pa my passion of it um just really sucked me in and I think within six months I had asked if I could do a newsletter for the society. And Anthony's like, well, actually I said, you guys don't have a newsletter. You guys should have a newsletter. And Anthony's like, yes, we should. And you should do it. And I was like, okay. Um, and I think within another six months, I was in as the vice president. And then due to some issues, I became the president, fill in in the president's shoes shortly thereafter. And I am very, I am very scientifically minded. Um, and I'm very good with languages. And so picking up the botanical Latin and, um, you know, just diving into the scientific literature. And I, I just very quickly was surrounded. I actually told my husband, I said, if I'm still really interested, because I, anyone who knows me knows I don't do things halfway. I do them all the way or not at all. Um, and I told him, I said, if I'm still really interested in mushrooms in a year, I'm going to buy a microscope. And I think, like I said, in six months, I was like all in and I went and got a microscope and started assembling a home lab and, uh, you know, slippery slope. Yeah, it's such a great. I How about a slippery slide? How about slip and slide? Yes, because it's fun. It's great. Um, well, so that's cool. So um, the Alabama Mushroom Society. Um, Sounds like they they were rocking and rolling. It was a cool culture. You you fit in with them, which is great. I I always tell everybody, step one, if you want to do more than just you know cultivate some mushrooms at home, is find out if two things. Find out if you have a mushroom club or society nearby, and then find out if you have an herbarium somewhat nearby. Those are like two cool things that if you're really lucky might be relatively close to you. Um, so you got in with those, uh, you know, that crew and it just, it clicked. Yeah. So the Alabama Mushroom Society was actually founded as a 501c3 nonprofit at the end of 2018. And it was like, we, they did that right at their inception. Um, and I went to my first meeting in March of 2019. So it was still fairly new yeah um the the structure was there the bylaws were there um but it was mostly just kind of monthly meetings and periodic forays and that was kind of the extent of it um and then i got involved and was like <laughs> what if we did this and what if we did this and what if we did this and um within being part of a really awesome board um we were able to really build and expand everything that they am S was doing and just make it something way bigger. Yeah, I, I vaguely recall like, don't you guys host now like fifty plus forays a year, some like astronomical number? Yeah, it's a lot. I, I actually think it's more more than sixty. Um, so we hold um a monthly foray in five different counties. So five times twelve. I mean, already right there. Um. Right. And then we hold um, a big morel foray every spring. We hold a couple of different chanterelle forays. Um, we hold black light forays. We do a couple like forays focusing on edibles. Um, yeah, we 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 try and 
I mean, that's what people join for. That's what they want. And and that's the value is being able to go out in the woods with somebody who is knowledgeable and not just trying to convince you they're knowledgeable um, and getting that hands-on experience. And, you know, you can learn a lot from field guides, but to be able to have that mushroom in your hand and experience the texture and the odor and like how it was growing and really like make that connection to the name, that's invaluable. Like that's, that's what your local mushroom club is for. And then the other thing I like is, right, because when you're online, everybody wants to be an expert. So, like, you're on some Mushroom ID group, and a bunch of people that really don't know, they just run off and try to figure it out so that they can say what it is and, and, and feel special. When you're in the middle of the woods with no cell reception, you find out who actually knows what these things are, you know, who knows how to describe them, how to observe them. And, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. It's Yeah, and here's something else. if if you're with somebody who really knows what they're talking about, they're not going to be afraid to say, I don't know what this is because the people that don't know, they're going to try and stick a name on it. And those of us that know, know that there's just no way, like there are, you are going to find stuff that I can't ID in the field. And that's just how it is. And I mean, you know, be prepared for that. Uh, that's a, a totally normal and acceptable thing. And, you know, hopefully they can steer you sort towards some guides and you can access some resources and figure it out. But, Sometimes the answer is we just don't know. Right. Yeah. It, for me, it feels it's similar to learning a language where, you know, you can take your first Spanish class and at the end of the class, maybe you can count to 10. Maybe you can ask how to, you know, order some food at a restaurant, but you really don't know anything yet, even though you spent this whole semester learning it. But slowly over time, it gets more and more comfortable the instincts kick in. You can you can get to family. You can get to maybe to genus pretty easy for certain genuses. But if you don't put in the work, like you just said, like you, if you got a mushroom club that is going out once a month, 12 forays a year, that is fantastic. Yeah. And if you are looking for a local mushroom club, you can go to the North American uh, Mycological Association website and see all their affiliated clubs. And that would be a really great place to start. If you're looking for a local mushroom club, they're organized by state. So it makes it really easy. Do you know anything about the history? So you said they were the uh, AMS was pretty new. How did they decide to get it going? So Anthony Goodman, I believe he lived, I want to say it was in Arizona, and he was part of a mushroom club out there. Um, and then he moved to Alabama and there was nothing like that over here. So like the rest of us, he's like, let's make one. So he did. Have you ever had anybody reach out to you who wanted to do the same thing saying, hey, Alicia, I want to start a club, but I don't know what the heck I'm doing? Yeah, I've had a couple of people different um, reach out. Um, I usually steer them towards NAMA because they have a couple of uh, resources as far as like how to start a club. Um, and I actually think Luke just did a webinar recently that may have been recorded uh, that sort of goes into if you want to start a local mushroom club here's how to go about it. So because those resources exist, I usually point them towards those. And I'm always happy to, you know, discuss it and let you know my experience and what has worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. And, um, and I find that most people in the mushroom community, we respect people who want to learn. It's the people, I don't want to hear from the people yet. If you are interested and you're driven and you really want to learn, we love to make time for you. And so don't be afraid to reach out. Um, and that goes not just for learning how to make a club, but I mean, I was pretty new and reached out to Alan Rockefeller and was like, I want to start doing PCR. Like he spent so many, <laughs> so much time on Zoom with me, walking me through how to do PCR from a home lab when I was brand new. Nobody knew who I was like, and he was just happy. And Alan Rockefeller was like the name in mycology that I knew. But I knew he was doing it and he took the time and sat down and most of us will absolutely do that. You know, take the time to help you learn if you really want to learn and you're making that initiative. So and and we're all super awkward. We are all super awkward people who like just just do it. Just put yourself out there and uh, reach out to and, and find some mentors because that's the people you can only learn so much on your own. Um, those are the people that you want to learn from. And so making those connections is paramount to going somewhere with your mushroom knowledge. And man, just if one two hour foray with somebody like 
Crystal Davidson, Walt Sturgeon, one of the Bassettes, Alan Rockefeller, you know, any of these guys, yourself, it's, it's priceless. Every mushroom you find, I mean, my God, I remember at NAMA being at, looking at something at a table and uh, Arlene uh, Bassett was at the table and she was like, oh, this is a neat one. I, I th Oh, I, I was setting some stuff I found down. She was like looking at it and she goes, oh, you want to know how you can tell this one? And then she just like, she smells it. She's like, smell that. She's like, no, go smell that one over there. See how it doesn't smell the same? I'm like, okay. Yeah, this is not in the field guide. That is not in the field guide. So, and even if it is, our sense of smell is so like subjective. Like somebody can describe a, an odor to me a hundred times, but until I smell it and make that connection myself, it's just words on a page. That's the kind of hands on experience that going to forays and going to mushroom workshops, going to in person events gives you. Yeah, man. And like you were talking about the, the texture, the weight, the, um, the photos do not justify or accurately portray the coloration of some mushrooms all the time. You can, yep. you can be reading a field guide and go through 15 brown mushrooms in a row going, how the hell would I ever tell these apart? But if you start seeing them in the wild, you see, oh, wow, this one actually is nothing like that one. But the photograph didn't actually capture that so well I, i'm like russella you like the texture of russella is super notorious we all know that they crumble they explode when you throw them at a tree the stipe snaps like chalk like they're just really and if you have a lactarius in your hands and you're trying to figure out if it's a russella or not that texture is what's gonna it's gonna be a key thing that you're not gonna be able to see in a photo and until you have them both in your hand that's one of those things like you just got to get that hands-on experience amen i love that so so i'm pretty sure the alabama mushroom society was real lucky to get you uh it sounds like things really started rocking and rolling but again like i said at the beginning i think that's just kind of who you are you you you're not going to let, and this is really one of my favorite aspects of having you on. I think you are the type of person where no one's going to get in your way from pursuing the thing that you want to do, from learning about the thing you want to learn about, from engaging with whatever your passion is. It's abundantly clear. You only got to be around you for like five minutes to figure out, oh yeah, you better stay out of her way. If she's If she's trying to figure something out right now, she gonna figure it out. Well, that's a really nice way to put that. Uh, it's true, and that's a really nice spin on it. These days, in the era where everybody, oh, I did you hear, Bill? I like mushrooms. Yeah, let me show you my photos. See, I was out in the woods, and I see I'm holding a mushroom. I love it. Ah, right. And then, and then Bill goes, oh, cool. What mushrooms that? And the guy's like, oh. Wait, so this is a mushroom you love so much? You didn't figure out what it was called? You didn't actually learn about it? and Because that's the air we live in, right? So I love people that, like you said, truly are here to learn, really want to figure some stuff out, whether you're cultivating or you're working on your, your field identification, whatever you're into, um, taking it more seriously than that real surface, you know, like posing with a pretty mushroom. Exactly. So I think that's great. How about this? Tell me what's up with uh, AMS right now. So anybody in Alabama, I definitely got people from Alabama who watch the show. I got people somewhat nearby there. I got family in Birmingham. So even I might end up down there one time when you got one of your forays going, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, come down for the Alabama mushroom festival, man. Uh, I might need to so like i said we got five we, we have a foray in five different counties from madison county all the way up north side of the state to baldwin county at the very south end of the state i mean we we try and spread things about um and our big thing is the alabama mushroom festival which this year will be happening october 26th and 27th at um nakalula state park no nakalula falls park in gadsden alabama um, Wait, what, what was that date again? October 26th and 27th. Uh, that's Saturday and Sunday, right? Let me double check. Um, I'm looking. 
and it's in Gadsden, Alabama, at Nakalula Falls Park. Yeah, 26th and 27th. Um, we bring all right. I'm going. Are you going to NAMA this year? I'm not. Uh, I I am, so we'll see. I'd I'd really love to, but it's all the way in Washington and having two young kids. I'm actually doing the Bassett's Highlands uh mushroom course this year. Uh, so my sister's keeping my kids for a week so I can do that. So I'm out of like babysitting favors. (laughs) Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's just too far for me to be away from my kids. Um, what Washington is just too far, but I um, gotta go. I can't not go. I got family in Portland. I got a bunch of Myco buddies that are in that area. So I'm like, man, I'd love to. I it's gorgeous go. out there too. And yeah. totally foreign. Like I can tell you all about Southeast mushrooms, pretty even Northeast East coast mushrooms. I'm pretty comfortable West coast. You put me out there. I'd be totally out of my element. I mean, everything I, I, I wouldn't know anything. Um, totally different. It would be it would be amazing, but yeah, it's it's just my kids are too young. Uh, we can't go to everything, yeah. right? Yeah. There's just too many Sadly, things to no. go to. Yes. Yeah, and I, I just bought a house, so yeah, me and my husband, I'm having to like figure out how many mushroom things I can do this year and and kind of right. schedule them. And Nama's just not making it. So, uh, but yeah, Alabama yeah. Mushroom Festival in October. Cool. It's uh, not Nakalula Falls Park is. Absolutely gorgeous. Alan and Arlene Bissett are lead mycologists this year. Um, oh. And we bring in mycologists from all over the United States. Uh, Sydney Ober Singleton is going to be coming in from Oregon. Uh, we usually have Alan Rockefeller. We're still uh, working on na- uh, nailing down who all is going to be coming, but it's uh, lots of presentations, lots of vendors. It's a, it's a blast. All right. Well, guys, anybody watching that's roughly in that area, I can tell you right now, if you're not trying to go to NAMA, and even if you are, it's not the same week. It's, it's you know, one week before. But, man, if, if you're in that neck of the woods, that'd be where I would be trying to go. And I still might try to go. But um, And I've also heard nothing but good things. And, again, I just know enough about you to know it's going to be phenomenal. You just named quite a few heavy hitters. Um, I can attest to the Bassettes being some really cool people to hang around. They're amazing. Like just I multiple times got to interface with them and learn something every single time. So yeah, that sounds like a good time. Um, also, when you're getting closer, because I'm gonna forget about it probably I- until it's like a month away, and then I'm gonna decide if I go. But you got to let me know. Um, I will definitely promote it on the show, even if it's like a little blurb or something like that. You just make sure I don't forget about it and we'll we'll make sure people know what's going on. I will try my darndest to remember. Remembering is not one of my I'm with strong you. suits. Mine either. All right. So I love that you moved and your first instinct was to hang out with a bunch of mushroom nerds. I love that. That's great. So, and you know, you were willing to do the work right? You actually wanted to learn. You had good ideas. You ask good questions. And the next thing you know, you blink and you're the president of, of, right? You went from who's this chick to the president. That's who she is. So that is, that's a cool story. I think that's important for a lot of people. I talk to people every day who are like, I just love this so much. I love it so much. And I'm like, cool, buy a book, crack it open, start reading it. Go out in the woods, look for the mushrooms. So you hang out did with all that. People. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And hang out with mushroom people. So you're doing that now. So when you moved, how long ago was that? Five years, four years? Where are we talking about? When I moved south, that was in yeah. 2012. Okay. So, so, oh, oh, wow. 12 years. Yeah. Right. Uh, but like I said, my, uh, my first, the, the first, mushroom society meeting that i went to that was in 2019 so oh so you've been there a little bit yeah okay okay well i'm i'm shortening the timeline a little bit i moved to georgia in 2012 um and then i didn't move to alabama until 2017 so yeah i was i was shortening my timeline a little bit but uh you acclimated to the south for a while i acclimated to the south yeah (laughs) yeah georgia was the the warm-up okay got it um, so, so we're talking about, you said 2017, 2018, 2019. So yeah, about five years ago. Okay. So guys, listen, this is what I want to tell you. 
if you start doing this, because I hear people say this all the time, they're like, oh, I went out and I don't know anything. These people know so much. I can't keep up. And I just go, bro, it's not a contest. We all started not knowing anything. Yes. Just go. Just keep hanging out with them. Ask questions. Bug them. Be annoying. Worst they're going to do is ignore you. Just it's okay. My favorite forays that I lead are ones with kids because kids are not afraid to ask me the questions that they want. And I'm always like, we'll be on forays and like, especially in the early season when there's not a lot, or if it's dry and there's not a whole lot of stuff popping, I'll be like, now's your chance. Like, ask me all your burning mushroom questions and see if I have the answers. Like, and people are like, oh, I don't know. Or they don't want to ask because they don't want to sound stupid. Kids aren't afraid to ask to sound stupid. They ask me all the questions and it sometimes leads to fascinating discussion. And adults learn from those questions and those answers because kids aren't afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. Well, I worst thing, I'll be like, well, no, or, you know, I don't know. Just ask. Uh, kids are great. Yeah, they're especially if you get them at a certain age. You know, there there is a point these days where once they get past, I think maybe about middle school, maybe they lose that instinct. As soon as they got people clicking like on their photos and crap like that, it's it's all over. But yeah, get them young, elementary school. I I bet they ask some real good questions. They really do. They really do. So you're rocking and rolling, AMS, killing it. I mean, it's got to be one of the more thriving uh, mushroom societies in the country. You're doing that, and then all of a sudden, you start getting involved with NAMA. Tell me, tell me the, the NAMA story. Bring me up to speed on where you are with NAMA. Okay, well, I, I can't remember, really. So, Brent Blizzard, he's the president of NAMA right now. And Brooke Reed is the COO. Um, and I can't really remember. One of them reached out to me. It may have been Trent and was like, you got to be involved. You got to do stuff. Like they've he, like sucked me in, tried to get me involved in, uh, I, I, I think it was Trent. It was Trent. He reached out to me and asked me if I would be the trustee at large on the executive committee. That's what happened. Um, him and Brooke put their heads together and they were like, we need Alicia. All right. So now so how did like, you hit their radar? Cause they're on the whole other side of the country, right? I don't know, man. I really don't know. Um, that would be a question for Trent and Brooke, okay. but one way or another, they knew who I was. Um, Word got around, dude. Remember. Word got around. Yeah. You. yeah. Um, and, uh, so I, so I was like, okay, you know, this is a great opportunity. Um, puts me in contact with a lot of people I can learn from, you know, doesn't, you know, doesn't require a whole lot of extra work. I just, you know, discuss things in a monthly meeting. Um, so I became the the trustee at large on the executive committee meeting and then very quickly uh, got a spot on the vouchering committee meeting and or the vouchering committee and the DNA sequencing committee and the nominating committee. Because again, that's I don't your, do that's things your style, way. dude. I know. <laughs> I'm well, like, yes, I'll just do all the things, please. Yeah. You, um, you show up, you do the work. You, you get promoted. That's how it works. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, more all the story right there. So uh, I, I I did step away from the DNA sequencing committee, but the other committees I'm still active on. I actually had a, a voucher committee meeting earlier today. Um, went to NAMA last year. Like you said, I was very busy uh, doing everything there, but uh, that's it. Yeah. I'm serving on the executive board and I love it. I, I love being involved. I like what they're doing. Um, I like, I, I think it's important. And I, I think it's important that they have kind of this overarching, that that kind of umbrellas all the affiliated clubs uh, that are statewide and it provides so many excellent resources and being able to go to that. And tons of, I mean, if you're, if you're a member of NAMA and check, because if you have a state mushroom club membership and it is an affiliate of NAMA, you'll get $5 off becoming a NAMA member. And then you have access to all kinds of uh, monthly talks and and webinars. And I mean, you can learn so much. You can learn as much as you are, time you're willing to invest because there's just endless resources. Book clubs, right? Online yep. book clubs. Yep. Yes. And if you continue to get involved, next thing you know, you're you're on some committees like Alicia here. 
And then I think this is what I'm learning from you so far. I mean, I knew doing the work. I knew really learning. Um, but I like what you said about, you know, you want more mushroom friends. You want to get, you want to learn more, have more mushroom friends. Because uh, everybody has sort of their their niche. Everybody has their genus that they're really knowledgeable about. And uh, like, don't ask me anything about bow elites. I don't, I cannot uh, identify any of them. They're, they're hard. I am almost entirely not interested in them. Don't ask me about bow elites. So I like to hang out with elite people because that's where I'm going to learn them. Uh, and so having mushroom friends, that's that's what you're, you know, everybody has their specialty and that's how you're going to learn these obscure species that you're not otherwise going to learn. Except by someone who's so nerding out by that, you know, about that group that they're uh, obsessed with it. it. It makes me imagine like if I was a young single guy again and there'd be some mushroom dating app where it was like, what I really am looking for is like, a brunette who uh, knows a lot about Lactaria, sir. <laughs> I mean, like, like, and then cool, I date her for a year. I get really expert. You know, I learn everything I need to know about Lactarius. You know, it's like I want to date like a like a short, petite little uh, Hebaloma girl or something like that. Yeah, we. This is a dude. This is maybe a good idea. It doesn't have to be for dating, but like, it would be cool if there's like a little. Um, social club where you could have your little groups you know you could yeah have the that's hilarious the rest of us are i mean we're just friends but yeah, uh, we do that i mean we got i can sit here and listen you know we have ariel bonkowski who does polypores we got manuel mendoza who does uh the copernoids i mean we can sit here and and like list off the this people who know different things and we just we're, we're friends we hang out we do mushroom stuff we hang out at nama it was a blast. I, I tell you, for me, someone who had never been at something at that level, it was cool for a bunch of reasons. One, it was cool to see Alan Rockefeller amongst his own kind, right? Just like, oh, it's like a whole room of Alan Rockefeller-esque people, right? It There's was a lot also, of truth to that, yeah. It was also amazing to see the Bassettes. You know, I knew they were the Bolite people, um, but I mean, Arlene's speech that she gave at the end was pretty oh emotionally. Gosh. I mean, it, it, that's how you, if you didn't cry, you don't love mushrooms. Get the fuck out of here. Like, right. I am not an emotional person. Like I don't cry. Like I am not an emotional person and I, oh, I know. Bawled. Oh my gosh. Yes. That was just, that was something. And yes. you don't know until you go, you guys like. Go go to an AMA annual foray or or a mushroom event. Like you don't know until you know. I mean, it's just cool to see, right? It's like if you like basketball and you got a chance to go hang out with a bunch of NBA players and play basketball with them all weekend. That's literally what it's like. You get, and then you have Methaney and you got real heavy hitter, you know, current researchers there. I heard all sorts of phenomenal lectures. Stephen Russell gave a phenomenal lecture. That one got me pretty amped on what they're all about right now. I mean, I listened to I forget, Ben Hammond, I think it was, did a cool truffle lecture. You know, you, you, I walked away learning a bunch of shit there. But it never gotten me as excited about stuff that I got excited about there by just reading a little quick article or, you know, a, a scientific paper. It, it really nurtures that energy. And not only that, like, you are never going to be, okay, so at, at NAMA, I was, like, scoping around the property at the lodge, and I found some scat that had uh, Palobolus fruiting on it, and this has been on my... Where was that at? Right outside the lodge, between the lodge and the lake. Um, and I'm, like nerding out because there are little mushrooms growing on poop my husband doesn't care about little mushrooms growing on poop there is nobody else in my like immediate circle that i can be like guys look at nama i was like look what i found and to have other people that get so excited about the things that you find so exciting is just cathartic like it was just so exciting to be around other people that nerd out about the thing that you're a nerd over like it's just it's just so much fun being with your people that's really what it is. It's like what it is. 
being with your people. People who get you. Yes. Who get your like your nerdy obsession. The people you don't have to explain. Like this is my problem. <laughs> I feel like all I'm ever explaining to people what I feel they don't say it, but what I know they really want to know is like, why are you so into mushrooms? They're like, so you can eat these? And I'm like, no. And they're like, what do you, you just want to know okay. about them? Yep. Okay. Yes. And so that's what I love is you don't have to explain that to anybody. My one roommate was uh, or not in my room, but the next door guy. It was like a pediatrician from New York state. And, you know, we fast friends. Why? Because we both like mushrooms. It didn't, it doesn't take anything at all. You just instantly click with the vast majority of people there every morning. I mean, I tried to rotate around and sit at different tables, meet different people. Everybody's talking about mushrooms, talking about what they found the day before. What they're, you know, what they what, hoping to find today, hoping yep. to find today, Which they're going yes. on. Yep. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, all that stuff is fun and exciting. And I think especially for somebody who <clears throat> hasn't figured out how to connect, going to a big foray like that really puts a lot of stuff into perspective. If you go to that and you're just like, yeah, that wasn't for me. then cool. Now, you know, so you can you can buy a remote control car. You can buy a drone and get your license. You can do all the other like normal hobbies people do. You go running twice a day, whatever you want to do. But if you go there and you come back and you're like, I got to buy this book and this book and I want to go next year. And then you go, okay, this is, this is my people. I like this. It's like the litmus test. True. All right. Very true. So that is great. I agree with you. Um, it's, we're pretty lucky to have NAMA. It's an organization that likes mushrooms like we do and supports amateur mycologists getting involved, um, connecting them with professional mycologists, connecting them with the virtually professional mycologists, some of the well-known citizen scientists, all that stuff. It's, it's priceless. If you guys are not members, go be a member. Join. Even if you don't go to the foray, like Alicia just said, there is a bunch of online stuff. There's a bunch of extras that, that you can connect with. And I feel like it's like getting a passport. Once you become a member, then the thought of actually going to a foray, it's kind of bumped up on that priority list a little bit. They, we also do, if you're a member of your local club, we do NAMA scholarships for the annual foray. If you have to have never been before and you have to be a member of your local mushroom club and then which clubs get the scholarship is um, a draw of a hat. But, um, you know, if it's out of your budget or something, there's still tons of value there. And then you may even be able to get a scholarship to go. Oh, I didn't know that. So you guys pick what club gets to choose it. Right. Um, and it's oh, it's a... Okay. It's a hat draw thing, and I think there's some rule about clubs that have already won scholarships. So like AMS, the, AMS, okay. yeah, AMS got a scholarship last year, and we were able to fund a a young up and coming mushroom enthusiast to be able to go to NAMA. That Wait, are you talking about have. Ethan? No, well, Ethan was a, a scholarship winner, but uh -huh. uh, he wasn't ours. Bucky Reader was our our scholarship oh, cool. winner. Um, but yeah, uh, there were some amazing scholarship winners that we usually ask that they write a a little blurb or a, a make a video or something to kind of like explain their experience and the ones that i seen from the scholarship winners it was a, a life-changing event for a lot of them it was it was a really big deal um i got to hang out with a couple of them yeah i got to hang out with ethan one day and yeah i think i think you're appropriately labeling it life-changing was yeah Ethan, Ethan was the one from Canadian Canada. kid. Yeah. Yep. He did a YouTube video and I, Oh yeah. It's phenomenal. It. You're did in you it. I, I got one yeah. little clip. Yep. Yeah. It was great. It was very cool. Um, that was awesome. Yeah. He's a good, I was like, dude, I need to hire you to do some content for me, man. I'm just saying right? that. Yeah. yeah it was he really well it. done. He really did. He will be on soon. Probably maybe a couple, two, three weeks. Yep. So yeah, oh, he, he was doing a, He's gone through some life changes, uh, I think, definitely. Well, we'll get the full story when he comes on. But, yeah, he, yeah. he's a really cool kid. I'll tune these, in for it, for sure. These are the, right, these are the people you meet. You just don't know who you're going to meet there.
So now how about we do this? So so we've we've gone over AMS, we're talking about NAMA. Um, I'm trying to hit all your because your resume is super impressive. Uh your mushroom resume, right? So I'm just trying to I'm trying to get through all these. All right. So you also then started working with uh Fundus, the fungal diversity survey out in California. How'd that come about? Um, so I'm just a volunteer project coordinator. Uh, they do these, the rare fungi challenges and they had one for the West coast and they had one for the Northeast and uh, like, so going out and finding like the rare underdocumented mushrooms, that's, that's my jam. Like that's especially like little ones and like, that's, that's what I'm into. And so I reached out to Gabriela and was like, Hey, how about we do a Southeast challenge? And she's like, great. And so I, kind of assembled a team and um there's a bunch of us who got together and uh working with the Bassettes and Jay Justice um and we put together a list of 20 rare underdocumented fungi from the southeast and have started advertising them and asking people to look for them we've actually found some really rare fungi uh including I was out in the woods with some mushroom friends they were up from Florida and Georgia, and we happened to be in the woods, and my kids were getting fussy, and so Holly Keating went with me to try and drag the kids back to the car because they were having meltdowns, and we took a shortcut, which wound up probably being a long cut, but it involved us sliding down a hill where she disturbed some uh, Hygrophorus cocori, which is on our rare fungi list, and I was ahead of her, and so she just like grabbed one or two. She had disturbed them when she was sliding down the hill, and she brought them, and then she's like, here. She knew I'd be excited that she found some mushrooms, but she was not prepared for how excited I was when I recognized what they were. And then we had to hike back up the hill, and the, the whole hillside, there was there was a, a pretty decent patch, and we were able to collect this mushroom. I think there's only been like nine, I could tell you exactly how many, but I think there's only been like nine collections ever of this fungus and we literally she slid into them going down the hill guys bring your kids fall down some hills you never oh, know you never know yeah you know. Um, i tell you what but yeah the, the, the when you least expect it is when you're gonna find a cool mushroom i i, I that has happened so many times and it so doesn't have times. to be on a foray it can be i mean heck aaron hilliard just had a video where he was like getting some some wendy's at a wendy's drive through and he's like pointing over there going wait a minute is that morels over there like he found morels at wendy's it's like, oh my gosh that is nuts you never know I, uh, you never know i wound up with a flat tire today leaving my house and uh mm. walked to my neighbor's house to see if they had a air compressor and discovered well, they weren't home but walking on that side of my, it's the, you know, it's my adjacent neighbor. So we share a property line and discovered a mushroom that I had never seen or heard of before. Uh, polyporous, I'll have to look it up. It's a polyporous species. Um, I, I was literally just walking over there looking to borrow their air compressor. Wasn't looking for mushrooms. Mushrooms were the last thing on my mind, but that's what I found. You went to borrow a compressor and instead you bor borrowed a polypore. Right. Yeah, nice. that's exactly exactly what happened. Dude, my my whole neighborhood knows me as a guy. I just might end up in your yard and they're like, what is he doing in our yard? And n now they know. Oh, he's the guy that he probably that's saw. That's that weird mushroom. mushroom guy. Leave him be. He's the weird mushroom guy. He's just picking our mushroom. He's not casing our house. I live in a neighborhood where everybody thinks their house is getting cased all the time. And the irony is you ask anybody who's lived here for multiple decades and they're all like, yeah, I can't ever remember anybody ever getting, you know, their house broken into. I'm like, then why is everybody worried about getting their house cased all the time? They'll be on, uh, um, what is that next? Oh, next door.com. Mm -hmm. really. We saw a van driving through our neighborhood today. Did anyone see it? Like y'all got way too much free time. I don't know what you guys are worried about. It's yeah. a polyporous fagicola. Ooh, fagicola. I guess, I guess it that uh this is why you need to learn the Latin binomials, you guys, because I've never heard of this mushroom before, but fagicola. So uh, uh -huh. phagus, phagus, that is beach. Cola meaning loving. So apparently it's it's Probably the initial mushroom was described from beach, from going on beach, Vegas. 
Yo, yeah. I can't even find a picture of this mushroom. Um, we used to what? call it something else. We used to call it something else in North America. Oh. Um, we used to call it by the European name. Hold on, I can tell you what that is in just a second. Uh, Brassicolia craterella. I'm gonna, I'll drop it in the chat. You'll, you'll find pictures of it under this name, but we know, oh, okay. now know that this name was misapplied to North American collections. That is the a fun, classic uh, move, isn't it? Yep. I was going to say, the, the fun of mushroom taxonomy. Okay, here we go. Here's a picture of it. Oh, yeah, I've definitely not seen this mushroom. It looked, I actually thought it was pheasant speck at first, Seriporus. Uh, I can see that. And it's time. Well, so now yeah, we know yeah. it's probably a similar time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was growing on wood. It has large pores on the underside. Mm -hmm. What what struck me as funny is it didn't have the, it seemed very young and I expected much uh, stronger, more prominent scales on top that it didn't have, which, and, and it didn't smell like cucumber. Seriporius squamosa smells like cucumber, tastes like right. cucumber. And I smelled and tasted this one and I was like, which is supposed to be edible. It was very meaty and, and delicious. Uh, is that and, roughly uh, what it looked like? Yeah. Mine was a little bit more worn. I can actually. I, of course, if... found the prettiest picture I could find. But I yeah, I, I would totally have thought fessing back when I first saw that. Yeah. Uh, when I first picked sure. it, that's what I thought it was until the smell didn't line up. And I was like, okay, something's uh, something's goofy here. You can see it in my picture on my iNaturalist later. So some people like reading murder mysteries, right? They Because they want to figure out who did it, right? I feel like taxonomy has got a little bit of that flair. It's a little bit of, I found a thing. Now can I figure out what I found? It is. It's the mystery. It's the, it's the fun of finding something and not immediately knowing what it is that's that's the best we see things all the time that we just ignore and, and pass over but when i find something or see something or somebody asks me they're like do you know what this is and it's not something that i can like immediately put a name to i'm like what is it oh i mean how many of these mushroom id groups where when you know there's like certain moments in the season where you just know oh crap this week it's going to be all morels next week it's going to be all ovoids oh gosh. right that's yeah right so there are these like very timely mushrooms and it's everyone gets super annoyed by it because oh again another guy with that mushroom that we all know what it is super yeah it's way more fun to be like wait what is that but it's a really good way if you're if just hanging out in the ID groups and following those seasons and seeing 500 different variations of how seriporia squamosis can present, it's a great way to learn it because you're seeing it in all different stages and all different... In all different places. I like that too because some of these things look a little bit different in this state versus that state. And yeah, I man, I love... I've been preaching INAT just as a learning tool you know, do your observations, keep track of all the stuff you're doing, but, but it will help you learn the stuff, you know, it, it's absolutely it's fantastic. All right. All right. So, so, okay. I don't know if I distracted you or how we got on that tangent, but, um, so tell me about fundus. How did you, like, how did yeah, that so come I just, together? I just, uh, you know, I wanted to create a Southeast Bear Funky Challenge. I, thought it was cool people like scavenger hunts i like scavenger oh so hunts. you and so, you brought that to them they didn't yeah yeah I, i'm just oh, a volunteer no way. coordinator all the, all the rare funky challenges are just put together by volunteers you're so an idea person like you're... yeah i was just like i, I want to do this and they were like yes and so i did and we are put together the list man it reminds me a while back on uh, some story post on Instagram, some some little motivational speaker person, whatever, had a quote. It was something like, uh, you know, don't wait for a seat at the table. If you're sitting there waiting for a seat at the table, fuck that. Just go make your own table. These mushroom clubs, any nonprofit, most organizations are run by the four people who are willing to do a thing. We are desperate for more help. We are desperate for people to walk in and be like, can I make a newsletter? I'll take the vice president position. 
I'm willing to do a thing. Like the people who are willing to show up and put the effort in, you don't have to know it all. You don't have to have all the answers. You just have to be willing to do the do the work and show up. And most organizations will be, you know, these volunteer based organizations will be so happy to have you. Um, I imagine Anthony was thrilled when I was like, I'll do a newsletter. Like I, I would love for somebody to be like, Hey, can I help out with the newsletter? Yes. Yes. Take it. Do it. Do what you will with it. Like, uh, you know, those are the people that we are in desperate need of. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there because it's hard for us to pick and choose and recognize someone who wants to do it because some people will say yes because you asked and I don't want someone to do it out of obligation. I want people to do I want people to step forward and to do things because they're passionate about it. Those are the people that make an organization great. Yeah, again to go back to the language metaphor, it's like if you've ever taken a language class, there are the kids in class who right away were willing to try to speak the language, right? They were the first to volunteer and those kids did great. Those kids retain the information. Yeah, just put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to screw up for sure in in the whole field, amateur field mycology realm. It is very easy to think you're going to get torn up or everybody's going to think you're stupid. Who fucking cares? Yeah, we don't. We really don't. We are We are so excited that you're making an effort like and we'll correct you and we'll try and teach you and and you know sometimes we won't if it's if it's something stupid like pronunciation a lot of times we won't even correct you because it just doesn't matter like we see you making the effort and that's what counts and uh you know just i know that's that's easier for some people than others but you have to be willing to try you have to be able be willing to put yourself out there and then that's how you're going to grow and learn more i love that so so you you put out 20 rare mushroom species. How many have you guys found since issuing that challenge? Oh, gosh. Of these 20 exceptionally rare mushrooms, I'm curious. Um, I'm going to have to pull up my spreadsheet to answer that question. But if you like, you can show our... If you go to the Fundus website and you click the oh, challenges okay. tab, there's a Southeast, and you can... Right. Um, or it might be just as quick and easy for me to send it to you, but then I can't be looking at my spreadsheet. All right. So yeah, while you're looking up how many, I'm going to pull it up, All right? This is cool. So they have it set up for, um, I think I'd heard about this, but I never checked it out. They got West coast, Northeast and South Southeast. All right. And definitely this is literally just a giant list of mushrooms. I've never heard of. I don't even know if I've heard of half of these genuses while well, Russia, but. Okay, there's a bolete in there. Negrophorus, Lactarius. Okay, so f few of these ones have Negrosabi and Tolomas. But just to look at these, yeah, what is five? Multifurca? Definitely never seen a mushroom like that. So we have nine of them documented. A few of those um, where people, they didn't collect it. They just posted a photo saying, yeah, saying like, hey, I found this. This is cool. Will anyone know what it is? Um, but we weren't able, because the gold standard, ideally, we would like you to take your photos and then post them to a naturalist and then collect the mushroom, dry it, and then send it to us and we will sequence it and then we voucher it. Um, our challenge, I, since I am associated with the herbarium, I'm vouchering them all at the University of West Alabama Herbarium. So they will be, and you will be listed in perpetuity as the collector of that mushroom. Um, and then they will be available for future work, uh, research. But sometimes it doesn't pan out that way and someone just happened to be traveling and took a picture and that mushroom can never be collected. But yeah, we have nine of them that have been. Um, and that's just. That's since. impressive. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. What so is it like a year old, right? Yeah, no, we we just launched it at the end of last year in August. Oh, yeah. OK, so, man, you guys are going to get all these here in no time. I bet. I hope so. There's a. Let's see, the Enteloma Gainesvilliers, that mm -hmm. has only been documented, I think it's, it's only been, okay, so it's, again, your, your 
Botanical Latin telling you about the mushroom, Gainesville, named after Gainesville, Florida, um, because that's the only place it's ever been found. And it has only been documented one, four times ever, and only in Gainesville, Florida. So some of these are rarer than others, and I would be so thrilled if somebody contacts me and says, I think I found Antiloma Gainesville. Uh, wow, but I'm hopeful. Just... And there's, uh, and so the person who did grab that, I, I, I'm looking it up on INET. There's at least the ITS for it. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jacob Polk was one of the collectors, so oh, cool. I'm sure he he had it. And then let's see. Uh, so, But, you know, I say that like, oh, no, we might not ever find it because it's so rare. But the Hygrophorus kokori, the one that we slid into down the hill, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's only been documented eight times ever. Wow. And I... <laughs> What are the I, odds of that? It, right? That's Slid crazy. into it in the woods, hanging out with that, mushroom people. And had she not crazy. been, you know, it's it's kind of a, a boring brown mushroom. She might, may not have even collected it if she was there by herself. But she happened to be me, with me, the person who right. is had, organizing the yep. rare fungi challenge. Like, yep. what are the odds? You never know. You never know. Man, I tell you what, too. If it's really, if it's spectacular looking and gorgeous... Odds are somebody figured out what it was. I tell you, the brown and the white mushrooms, man, collect those suckers. Send them to Kyle. You never know what you just collected. It might be something nobody knows about. Just never know. And you know what this reminds me of? One of my favorite uh, lectures was uh, Brandon uh, Matheny did that lecture on the under, what did he call it? Under documented or under uh, oh, under observed mushrooms of Appalachia. I thought, thought that was just fascinating. So cool to, yeah, see the rare stuff, right? Because then you're like, well, these are the rare ones we know about. Right. I want I want the list next year. It's like, okay, here's the part two. You guys found a bunch of mushrooms for us. These are also very rare. Yeah, and I know Fundus right now is looking for another California collector. So if anybody's out in California, likes to, you know, do this kind of thing, looking for mushrooms and maybe isn't brand new, my guess is they're probably hoping they find somebody that kind of knows what they're doing. But, you know, if you really love being out and about in nature, you can get paid by fundus to go find mushrooms for them. That's the dream, man. It's not, not a bad gig. Stuff. Not a bad gig. Yes. Um. All right, so that is cool. And then uh, the one I think I had didn't hear about until um, I saw you mention something about it at the Ohio Mushroom Festival because you were you were grabbing some of the specimens from there for this new gig. Is tell people what you're doing at Old West Alabama Herbarium now. I am the assistant curator of fungi, so I manage all the non lichen fungi. I you're not liking lichen. It's okay. Lichens are hard, man. Uh, they're interesting, and you can tell when there's nothing else popping because my eye naturalist will be full of lichens, and I like tag all my lichen friends in them. But yeah, no, I don't do lichens. And uh, um, the other assistant curator, uh, he he does lichens, so I'll just leave that to him. Um, but I do all the the macro fungi, and yeah, uh, Kevin England brought me on. He proposed to uh, Brian Keener, the curator of the herbarium. He said, this chick knows more about Alabama mushrooms than anybody. Like, let's get her on board. And I was like, yes. And so uh, I get lots of dried mushrooms. And I'm already collecting, like, these huge amounts of mushrooms uh, through the Alabama Mushroom Society. We have a whole team of collectors that document mushrooms for me and dry them and mail them to me. I get hundreds of, I can't imagine what my mail lady must think, but I get hundreds of mushrooms in the mail um, and I accession them for the herbarium and they go down there and get saved forever. So man, all right, we got get you back to Ohio Mushroom Festival. You got Alabama Mushroom Festival. Now, so the herbarium, though, isn't just taking Alabama mushrooms, right? Right. No, we okay. uh, we we take other mushrooms as well. Like I said, you know, I accessioned all the ones from that Ohio Mushroom Festival. And uh, I just recently bought a house in Tennessee. So I'm, you know, 
up here collecting and we'll accession them down there. It's just a matter of if the person who's in charge of putting them into the database has time to do it. Uh, that's what it comes down to. Now, so have they had the meeting yet that they're going to need more space because you're going to fill all their shelves real fast? Right? They're they know that out okay. real soon. Yeah, gonna, they, yeah. They know. <laughs> I have. I. Uh, I had a thousand mushrooms sent to me in December. We just sequenced every single one of them. Wow. Um, and they're all down in my basement, waiting to go down to the University of West Alabama. Uh, nice. But I mean, that's one month. That's one month of. And when I started there, I think there was less than twenty macrofungi. It Wait, was, what? They had, yeah, they had, they had, so actually I worked with Auburn first. I got teamed up with Auburn working with their herbarium, um, just depositing collections through Fundus because we got a sequencing grant through Fundus and part of the sequencing grant was everything we had to collect it. We had collected through the gr grant had to be deposited into an herbarium. And so I started working with Auburn. And they had, the previous curator was into microfunky. So he had lots of leaves and things that had, you know, invisible to the naked eye fungi on them. But there were less than 20 macrofungi in the herbarium. And very quickly, we deposited a whole lot of specimens at Auburn. But the thing was, is because of the rules of herbaria, after I deposited them, I no longer had access to those specimens. So if I had something that I wanted to rerun a sequence on, or if I had a researcher that was really interested in it, or if I wanted to scope it again, I, I'd have to go through all the red tape of trying to get access to those specimens. And um, Kevin England is a member of the Alabama Mushroom Society, and so he knew what I was up to and what I was doing and was already working with the herbarium at West Alabama and proposed that I start helping out there and by being the assistant curator of fungi, I have full access to all of our specimens. So it cuts through all that red tape. And so that's, I mean, that's huge for me. That's, you know, I don't want to be depositing my stuff and losing it forever. I don't want to be losing stuff that could be going into the hands of somebody who's really actively researching it because of red tape of an herbarium. So yeah, we, uh, you know, Great. I just did I the it. thing. Just do it. Yes. No red tape. Now, also, you, sh you just said, like, I don't want to worry about somebody researching it. But, I mean, you said they only had 20 macro fungi there. So, it's like, who's, nobody's researching it. So, you're good. Now, it's your it's your baby. You're going to get to oh, fill yeah, those no, yeah. up. No, I, I want to be able to put them in the hands of people who are researching right. them. That's what I'm saying. And And with Auburn, like, you have to have, you know, Try and go try and borrow a mushroom from an herbarium, and people like us, they're not going to turn them over, um, unless you have a, a some working with a university, you're working on a PhD, you're with some mycology lab, they're not going to give them up. And uh, there's a lot of significant work happening by people like us, and I want to be able to send the mushrooms to those people when it makes which, sense. To do so. Which which that sort of right. So that that leads me to something else that uh, I had Scott Astuni on. Um, I forget who else I had on that that brought this up, but like you can make your own herbarium. Yeah, it's not so fancy. Um, MushroomExpert.com. Michael Co has a page that talks about you know starting your own herbarium and really dry your mushrooms really well, stick them in the freezer. Take them back out, make sure, you know, in bags, freeze them for 48 hours below zero if you can, um, and then dry them again, and then keep them bagged up and labeled and put them in airtight plastic containers from Walmart or, you know, and just keep them dark and dry. That's what they want and have some sort of labeling system, whatever works for you. And you can just save your own mushrooms, you know, until you have a place that you can deposit them or if you want to deposit them. But yeah, start saving them because, you know, a, a big part of um, the sequencing is we need specimens. And so hold on to them. And then eventually somebody's going to be like, we're sequencing and we need you to send us stuff. That's when you break out your herbarium. So last week we had on uh, these gals from, uh, now I forget if they're in Washington or Oregon, but anyway, I, I think they're in Oregon. And they own a freeze dryer, a lawflizer, right? So they freeze their mushroom specimens, and now they're, I, this is very non-scientific, but they're, they're making these, when you freeze dry them, they're 
perfect, right? They don't change morphology, physical size, nothing changes. It's it's a perfect, exactly how you plucked it from the earth. And then they're infusing it with resin and they're making these like permanent statues. And my first thought was, dear God, one day there might be a mushroom museum where you could go around and see all these oh, different. That's so cool. You could have the Entoloma room. You could, yeah, you could have the Cortinarius room. You could have the Amanita room. Okay, so it's really funny that you're bringing this up because um, the Alabama Mushroom Society, we're actually talking about in the very near future doing exactly that, about purchasing a freeze dryer and then doing resin injections for to make um, educational teaching tools, to be able to have them on the booth, to be able to handle them, to be able to have them there in front of us. But yeah, we're, we're talking about doing exactly that. They, they got it figured out. It, they, they will openly admit it's not an easy process, but they, they got videos on YouTube for it and all that stuff. So it's doable. And I think what's great about it is you also get the stature of the mushrooms. So, you know, you, you could have five different chanterelle species and show like, generally speaking, here's the range of these five chanterelle species. You know, they can be this small or they can be this big when they're mature. Here's some paniolus that, you know, some are really, really tiny, and some can get to be pretty big. Just the physical interface, even though you don't quite get the same weight or texture or smell, physically seeing it there is still pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. I hope you guys do that. I, yes, get a freeze dryer. And then also put Skittles in it, because if you had freeze dried Skittles, they're amazing. I they're, haven't, but uh, I've heard about they them. They are crazy good. Yes. Like, I can't, I can't get enough of them. If I bought one, I would probably never not be freeze drying Skittles. I'd be buying it by the, the pallet. I, I heard that freeze dried mush or marshmallows are really good too. Like yep. if you got a freeze dryer and you just make them into astronaut fruit food. Cheesecake, gummy nerds. I mean, the sky is the limit, Alicia. You can freeze dry a lot of candy uh, and it tastes good apparently. So yes. Get a freeze dryer. I think that would be a great purchase for the Alabama Mushroom Society. And then you just All gotta have powers that be no. <laughs> yes, yes, that is a fantastic idea. Um, so I just want to kind of sum up here that five years ago you had, I mean, you did have a background, right? You're you're a survivalist, you are a wild food forager, so you kind of had the way a little bit. I probably but, I couldn't have told you two mushroom genera. Yeah. But, but I, you, I you love nature. You love being in nature, which is definitely a prerequisite. But you, like you just said, you knew, knew nothing about mushrooms for the most part five years ago. Yes. So for the people that always tell me, yeah, I went out and man, I don't know. There's so much to learn. And I just say, uh, either you want to learn it or you don't but don't let that you don't know it stop you from connecting and and learning about it alicia is the absolute testament to roll up your sleeves raise your hand volunteer get involved make friends ask questions these are these are the behaviors of people who in just five years go from like you said i don't know a single hardly a single mushroom genus to yep making it happen assistant curator at an herbarium uh involved in state and you know national level organizations doing all sorts of fun stuff and i can't imagine where you're going to be in another 10 years i mean you'd be writing a few books and all that good stuff who knows who knows or, I mean, I guess basically, well, based on what you just said, I mean, maybe also, you know, the uh, the manager of the Alabama Mushroom Museum. Maybe I'm in that's... Tennessee now, so. Oh, I got to okay, it'll be. State. Yeah, I All got right, to. Chattanooga, Chattanooga Mushroom now. Museum. Okay. Yeah, there, there we, we go. go. Man, if you guys get a chance to meet Alicia, see what she's all about. I've I've seen her hunting mushrooms. Um, She, I got a few people I hang out with up here in Ohio and uh, all you got to do is watch one real forager do what they do once. And then you see, Oh, 
this is how you do it. Okay. You got to get down on your knees. You got to really look. You, you, you got to pay attention. You can see me hunt mushrooms too, if you like. You can check out the documentary. Oh, yes. Oh, I forgot. Nominated for an Emmy. That is amazing. Yeah, I have it. Let's Isn't let's watch a little bit of it. Let's watch a little bit. I can pull it up. Will Green is the producer. He did a fantastic job. He he pulled like the flow of it. He it just turned out so good. Oh, it's super pro. It's like, yeah. Everyone can benefit from learning more about our surroundings. Mushrooms are just so darn cool. They are more like you and I than they are plants. They breathe in oxygen, they put out CO2. So we have to monitor and manage when we're actually growing or cultivating these. We would be a giant trash heap if we didn't have fungal organisms with us on the planet because they serve as really the main kind of decomposers along with bacteria of materials within the environment. There are mushrooms that taste like maple syrup, and there's mushrooms that are sour, and there's mushrooms that are so spicy they'll contend with any pepper. There are blue mushrooms and spiky mushrooms, and you just have to go out and look. I mean, they're right here. They're out in the woods where you live, and you just need to go out and look for them, and everyone can benefit from being more connected to our earth and uh, nature and the world we live in. We don't know, I mean, so many other sciences are centuries ahead of mycology. So, I mean, that's that's my personal interest. It is, it's an, an unstudied field. I mean, essentially, in, in the terms of other sciences, there's a lot to discover. I lead a monthly foray for Alabama Mushroom Society where I just take people out in the woods and, and help them identify mushrooms and talk about mushrooms and answer their questions. And we just go out and see what we can find and, you know, try and, try and teach them how to document mushrooms. and pique their interest. So this is a member of Amanita section Phalaeoidea. Um, these are the destroying angels. So it's only poisonous if you eat it? I can chew it up and spit it out and as long as I don't swallow it, it's fine. And what it'll do if I were to eat this mistakenly, I would feel a little nauseous, I might throw up for a little bit, I would recover seemed to be fine and then about two weeks later my liver would completely liquefy and unless i had a liver transplant i would die anything you read online about oh well you can boil it with a quarter and if the quarter turns black there's no easy trick you have to learn the couple of toxic species in your area there's no shortcut you, you got to learn it we have an alabama mushroom festival and it's a, a pretty big deal we have lots of presenters mycologists from all over the united states are coming to do presentations and we have vendors vending all kinds of mushroom wares and things like that. And it's just a great place for people who are interested in mushrooms to get together and meet other people that are interested in mushrooms. Dude, that's like you're you're like uh, famous now. That's so cool. That is That was a really well done video. I see why it got nominated for an Emmy. It just blows my mind. That's Isn't that very fun. Cool. Not, 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 uh, I don't think acting is my calling, but uh, I, I think it's very cool for the producer that I was nominated for an Emmy. And yeah, uh, way cool that Funky are getting that platform. I, I yes. really love that there is a a Funky focused film that is being nominated for an, an Emmy. That's way cool. I love it. Yeah, well, see, you're out there. You're doing it. That's and that's who they want to talk to. The people out there and doing it. So good, good for you. I thought that was so cool. I saw that. I don't know a few days ago pop up and. I was like, oh, great. We're definitely going to definitely got to see. Well, I, I had to ask you and see if we could show it. So I'm, I'm glad we were able to. But you guys, uh, Alicia's on Facebook. You you can connect with her there. You can watch the full video there. Um, I, maybe I can get a link and, and put the link in the description as well. Um, I'll, I'll put up links for Alabama Mushroom Society. I'll put up links for NAMA. Uh, and I'll put up the, the link for the page where you can go find a local mushroom uh, club you know for wherever you live and uh and the dates for the the main foray for you guys just so people got you know little access to all the information um 
and the Southeast Rare Fungi Challenge. There's also the oh, Northeast yes. Challenge and the West Coast Challenge. So no matter where you're at, well, assuming yep. you're in one of those areas, there's some rare mushrooms, a, a nice scavenger hunt for you to go out and find. Yeah, and so this is another thing I want to say. Um, like I had Scott Astuni on, right? And he's this guy who used to just like, you know, psychedelic mushrooms and a very casual interest. And then one day found a mushroom that changed his life. And the next thing you know, he's publishing papers, novel species, et cetera, et cetera. This is, I love telling this story of how all you have to be is genuinely, truly interested in the mushrooms and let that interest just follow where it wants to go. And you might not do the exact things Alicia's doing or Scott's doing or Alan Rockefeller's doing, but you'll do the thing you're supposed to do. And then you'll be a part of it and you'll be contributing. And, you know, this is how communities work. They don't work when everyone's just doing this and clicking likes. Like no community's built that way. It's built by putting in time, energy, work, and and truly connecting and being, right? You got to myceliate to, you don't, you're not getting any fruits if, if, if you don't have a real nice myceliated cake. So you got to make those connections. You got to do all that work. So I, I just all think you're passion. just, yes, you are just such a great example of following your passion, following your interests. Like I said, asking questions, being willing to do the work, volunteering. You're, you're, you're definitely like one of the, the Michael rock stars, at least of all the people I've had on the show and talked to. I'm, I'm very impressed. And I know in another five years, 10 years, 15 years, it's only going to be more, more, more cooler, cooler, cooler. And uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm happy I got to meet you at NAMA and, and see what you were all about. Thanks for having me. Yeah. This was fun. All right. Well, so like I said, don't be a stranger. If you got anything you want to promote, I, I tell everybody this. So let me know what it is. You know, maybe it'll be a 15 minute segment that you can come on and, and talk something up. Maybe it'll just be, I can, I can mention it. It's not that big of a deal. Cause I know you probably got 19 things going on all the time, but yeah. I, I will be happy to share uh, any news that, that you got going on with, with my audience for sure. All right. Well, again, thank you for coming on. It, it was an absolute pleasure. I love getting to know you a little bit more. Uh, definitely got me feeling like I'm slacking over here. So um, I, I need that. I love that. That's, that's great. Um, keep it up. Thank you. All right, guys. That was Alicia Milliken of the Alabama Mushroom Society. Uh, loved getting a chance to talk to her. Um, I tell you what, go to the Alabama Mushroom uh, Festival. I don't know. She made a good case for it. I might have to get out there. Uh, could be a real good time. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I know we had a quick little show tonight. Uh, I'm uh, out and about uh, looking for mushrooms this past weekend, so uh, need needed to get one in the can. That's what we did. Um, shout out to my boy, Kyle Cannon, Ohio Mushroom DNA Lab, making it happen, um, doing some real work. Uh, shout out to him and everybody that's working with uh, OMDL. Amateur mycology, got to love it. Got to love it. It's exciting. All right, guys, until next week, go grow some mushrooms. Thank <music> you.